Solar. Solar is leading Europe in electricity generation. In fact, renewables hit 54% last month. 54%. So Europeans, when you charge your electric car, if you don't have solar, there's still a pretty good chance that you're actually charging from renewable energy. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see Europe move away from Russian oil and gas and towards creating their own electricity. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. I think that's a big positive. More than half of the European Union's electricity came from renewables in the second quarter of 2025. Solar is winning. According to new data from Eurostat, renewable energy sources generated 54% of Europe's electricity in the second quarter of 2025, so for a three-month period. And it's worth mentioning, that is amazing growth of 53% year over year. The growth, where is it coming from? It's coming from solar, which produced 122,317 gigawatt hours. And that means solar was around 20% of total electricity generation in Europe, 20% solar. A lot of people still think, including the US government, that solar is not going to work. It's a joke, it's inefficient. It's, um, you'd have to cover the entire planet with solar three times over to have enough electricity, which is obviously ridiculous. But anyway, Europe doesn't agree with Donald Trump, so they're continuing to install lots of solar. June 2025 was a phenomenal month. Solar became Europe's single largest electricity source for the first time in history. It supplied 22% of all power in Europe in June. And that meant it beat nuclear at 21.6%, wind at 15.8%, hydropower at 14%, and natural gas at 13.8%. It's worth pointing out though, that even though Europe is at around 54% renewable energy, Denmark, is leading at 94.7%. And some countries are even at 100%. Anyway, 94.7% in Denmark. Latvia is at 93.4%. Austria, 92%. Croatia, 90%. Portugal, 86%. The worst, Slovakia, 19.9%, so 20% for Slovakia. Malta, where it's really sunny, 21%. And the Czech Republic, 22%. Now, Malta, they have an excuse. They are a very, very small island. But places like Slovakia, yeah, not, not so good, or the Czech Republic as well. However, in total, 15 European countries sure saw their share of renewable generation increase significantly. Luxembourg was up 13.5 percentage points, Belgium up 10, and most of this, pretty much all of the increases were coming from solar. Across Europe, solar made up 37% of renewable generation, followed by wind at 30%, hydropower at 26%, and biomass at 7.3%. So when it comes to renewables, solar is dominating, 37%. But wind is not that far behind, 29.5%, well, basically 30%. I mean, really, solar is only 7% of 7% in front of wind in terms of percentage generation. But solar deployment is, is increasing at a far faster pace than wind. And obviously biomass at 7.3% is, is shrinking its percentages. Geothermal is very small at 0.4%. The other thing that I think is worth mentioning is batteries. Batteries are playing a huge role in the success of solar. As companies start to realize, well, we're not just kind of this solar duck curve where we create all this electricity in the middle of the day and then we waste it. We can use batteries to store that electricity. Batteries that are becoming cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and lasting longer and longer and longer, then it makes solar much more economically viable. So we're seeing similar deployment, guys, of renewable energy in places like China, Australia, even places like Pakistan. These are the numbers of renewable energy this year. If you know someone sharing false information about renewables, saying it's never going to work, the option is the answer is coal, which some people now in Australia are saying, which is insane. And many people believe it's nuclear. Some people believe it's hydrogen power. Some people believe it's some um, fairy dust. There's all kinds of crazy stories out there. But if you actually want to share some data with your friends, share this video with them. Subscribe to the channel, why not? And like it for us. I'd really appreciate your support. It means a lot. 
Thank you. Bye-bye. The Sydney EV International Motor Show. If you want to get a 50% discount on your tickets, all you got to do, click the link in the description and use the promotion code that's in the description. Just copy and paste that. Now, I should mention there's only 200 tickets available per day. So if you go to use the promo code and you can't get a ticket, wait till the next day. Don't wait until the day before the show to get your tickets because otherwise you'll probably miss out on getting the 50% discount. News is flooding the internet. There's a whole lot of hype around this. Is it legit? Is it real? I think it is. The world's first self-charging supercapacitor actually harnesses solar energy with a staggering 63% efficiency. Now, to give you some context, the best solar panels in the world currently harness solar at around 25% efficiency. Mine are about 23%. You can get up to 25 now. This number of 63% does seem too good to be true, but here are the details behind these claims from some engineers. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. Now, guys, I was just thinking to myself, imagine if my solar panels could harness 63%, 63% of the solar that I generate, the electricity that I generate, I could probably produce around about 300 kilowatts of electricity a day, and then I could buy 10 Xpeng G6s and have a taxi fleet, just fantasizing. A collaborative research team that has unveiled a high-performance self-charging energy storage supercapacitor that efficiently captures and stores solar energy is a significant advancement for sustainable energy. There's been a whole lot of hype around supercapacitors. There's a huge excitement around them, similar to what there is around nuclear now. A lot of that excitement has sort of faded away, but I think some companies are doing some pretty amazing stuff with them. Because we've kind of moved on from supercapacitors, there's a little bit less kind of buzz around them, but maybe that shouldn't be the case. This innovative technology combines supercapacitors and solar cells, marking a milestone in energy storage developments. The groundbreaking study published in the journal Energy highlights how the research team has enhanced the capabilities of existing supercapacitors. By applying composite materials made from nickel-based carbonates and hydroxides, they achieved incredible results in energy efficiency that, to be honest, have never been seen before. The team incorporated various transition metal ions, including manganese, cobalt, copper, iron, and zinc, 